This is the third part of my personal A to Z of liners and cruise ships from the 1920s to the present day. It's in five parts. The ships are shown at sea, approaching or leaving harbours, docked and anchored. Some are short clips, because that's all I have, and some go on for over a minute or more. Some of the film has been included before in my DVDs, but a lot has not previously been released, particularly a lot of the black and white post-war material, and the most recent up-to-date material taken on video whilst cruising. Quality varies from rather grainy, as you see here, to the very sharp images taken more recently. Each part is about 50 minutes or longer, and I've tried to split them according to alphabetical order. Fair Sea was built as a passenger cargo vessel and taken over by the US Navy and converted to an aircraft carrier charger which served the Royal Navy. She was bought by Alvin SS Company in 1959 and registered to Sitmar Line. Another cargo vessel converted to an aircraft carrier, the Attacker, for the Royal Navy, was handed back in 1946 and sold to Sitmar in 1952 and renamed Castle 40 as a cargo ship. She was converted to carrying passengers in 1957 and renamed Fair Sky. She's seen here leaving Melbourne. Fair Star was built as the troop ship Oxfordshire and run by Bibby Line. She was sold to Sitmar in 1964 and renamed Fair Star. She's seen here in Southampton. Originally built at Sylvania for Cunard in 1956 and sold to Fairwind Shipping Company, that's Sitmar, in 1968. Fairwind is seen here laid up in Southampton during the Siemens strike. Seen here at the Tilbury landing stage, Federico C was built by Ansaldo Sestri Penenti for Costa Armatore Genoa. She became the Royal Premier Cruise Line ship in 1983 and was sunk at sea in 2000. Festival was originally the Union Castle ship Transvaal Castle, later S.A. Val, and in 1966 was sold to Carnival Cruise Lines and renamed Festival. Flavia was the Cunard's media, sold to the Codjar Line in 1961 and renamed Flavia. She was laid up in 1989. France was built in 1960 and was the last French transatlantic ocean liner. She was built by Pennot Saint Nazaire for CGT Le Havre and sold to Norwegian Cruise Line and became the Norway in 1979. She cruised successfully for the Norwegian Cruise Line for some years before being laid up in 1999. 
These black and white shots are of her coming up Southampton Water. France is a lovely looking ship, an arrival to the QE2. She's seen here off the Isle of Wight. Built by Brown in 1954 as the Ivernia for Cunard Line, her name was changed in 1963 to Franconia. She was later sold to Nicaris Maritime Corp and renamed the Fedor Shalayapin. She's seen here in the early 1960s returning from a cruise. Once named the Bohem, Free Winds is now owned by the Church of Scientology. She's seen here in Barbados. Another lovely Italian ship, Galileo Galilei, built by C.R. Del Andratico for Lloyd Triestino and converted to a cruise liner in 1977. She was sold to the Chandras Group in 1983 and renamed Galileo. She's seen here in Gravesend Reach. In 1990 she became the Meridian Celebrity Cruises and then in 1999 Sun Vista. She sank later that year. The Giulio Cesare was built by C.R. del Andratico for Italia S.A.N. in 1950. She's seen here in Naples. She was scrapped in 1973. Shaw Savile's Gothic, built by Swan Hunter in 1947, took the Queen and Prince Philip to Australia and New Zealand in 1953. Later she caught fire in 1968 and was scrapped in 1969. Yet another ship built by Ansaldo Sestri Ponente, this time for the Swedish America line. The Gripsom of 1956 was 23,000 tonnes. She was renamed Navarino in 1974, and then in 1984 she became Regent C. She was scrapped in 2001. Built by Caverna Moss for the Royal Caribbean International, the 1996 Grandeur of the Seas is seen here in Copenhagen. Having returned from our excursions, we were able to see the grandeur of the seas sailing out of Copenhagen Harbour.
the 1954 passenger cargo ship Hamburg of the Hamburg America line. In this instance she was travelling from the far east Singapore to London. I'm very grateful to Hebridean International Cruises for some of the footage that follows. We start with Hebridean Princess, seen here in Oban. She was a Calimac Ferry Columba before conversion to luxury cruising. Hebridean Princess cruises mostly in coastal waters around Scotland, whereas her bigger sister Hebridean Spirit cruises internationally. The ships are furnished with every comfort that one would find in a first-class Scottish hotel. Sailing in Hebridean Princess is a wonderful way to see some of the islands and coastal towns of northern Scotland. I know for a fact many passengers come back year after year to enjoy the experience once again. Piper sees us off from Oban as we sail on a short cruise. Finally, we see Hebridean Princess at sea. At twice the tonnage, Hebridean Spirit was Renaissance 6. She also had the names Megastar Capricorn and Sun Viva. Again, her furnishings and fittings are the height of luxury. With her larger size, the Hebridean Spirit is able to undertake the international side of the company's program. Built in 1948 by Vickers Armstrong for p &O, Himalaya was used mainly on the Australian route from Tilbury to Sydney. She can be distinguished from her smaller sister, Tusan, by the fact that she just has the one mast, the foremast. As passenger numbers dwindled on the Australian route, Himalaya was used more and more for cruises. She was scrapped in 1974.
We move on now to another P&O ship, the Iberia, built in 1954 by Harland and Wolf. She could be distinguished from her sister Arcadia, by the top of the funnel Arcadia had a black capping, and by the fact that she had a wrap-around deck aft on a deck. Arcadia and Iberia were lovely looking ships at nearly 30,000 tons. They differed somewhat from their Orient Line sisters in that their bridge was more traditionally placed further forward. Again, the fall off in the Australian trade meant that Iberia spent the last days of her life mainly cruising and she was scrapped in 1972. The 7,300 tonne El Mater, launched in 1964, was later renamed Viking Prince in 1982, and then Viking Princess two years later. In 1997, she was sold to Palm Beach Cruises and became Palm Beach Princess. She's seen here in the Pool of London, next to the Belfast. I can assure you that those big guns don't belong to her. A very quick look at the independence of 1950. She was 23,719 tons. In 1974, she was sold to Atlantic Far East liner as the Oceanic. She was scrapped in 2001. The Infante Dom Henrique was launched in 1960 and was renamed Alhassa in 1976. She became an accommodation ship in the Middle East. We've seen this ship before. She was originally the Transvaal Castle, then the Vaal, and then Carnival Cruise Lines Festival. She became Island Breeze, and then the Big Red Ship 3. She's seen here leaving Naples. Originally built for Norwegian cruise ships as the Island Adventure, Island Princess was sold to P&O in 1974 and renamed. She was one of the love boats. She's now sailing as Discovery. Built by Swan Hunter and Wigram as Mozilla, the ship changed its name in 1928 to Jamaica. She's seen here in Barcelona before the war. She was launched in 1921. She was 10,250 tons 
and she was scrapped in 1954. Kenya Castle was built by Holland and Wolf and launched in 1951 for the Union Castle Line and she served on the Round Africa run. She was sold to Chandras in 1967 and renamed Americanus. She's seen here at Anchor off Mozambique. You may see that her masts are painted brown unlike those on the Cape Run which were painted white. Built in 1958, King Henry was originally built for the King Line and transferred to Clan Line in 1959. She was sold to the Greeks in 1972 and renamed African Lady. She was a passenger cargo liner of 5,993 tons. We see her here docked in a UK port with another Clan Line ship. The 1952 Kungsholm was built for Swedish America Line. She became the Europa in 1965 and then uh, MS Columbus. She was sunk in Barcelona in 1984. The larger Kungsholm of 26,670 tons was built in 1965 by John Brown for Svenska America Line and she was sold to flagship cruises New York in 1975 and then to P&O in 1978 as Sea Princess. She was later named Victoria and when sold by P&O she became the Mona Lisa. You will no doubt have noticed that the P&O removed the forward funnel. We will see her as Mona Lisa later in this film. Laconia was built originally in 1929 as a Joanne van Olden Barnveld. She served as a trooper from 1940 to 1945. She was sold to the Greek line in 1962 and renamed Laconia. She caught fire in 1963 and sadly 128 people lost their lives. The ship is seen here leaving Tilbury and sailing down the Thames towards the estuary. Didn't the Italians know how to build beautiful ships? This is the 1958 Leonardo da Vinci. 33,340 tons. She was built by Ansaldo Sestri Ponente for Italia SAN. Sadly she burnt out in 1980 and was scrapped in 1982. first see the Mausdam entering Barbados. She was 55,450 tons and 
launched in 1993 and was built by Fincantieri for Holland America Lines. get a closer look now as she approaches the harbour entrance. The ship in the foreground is the sea cloud, the old and the new. And from the new to the old, we watch as the 1914 Cunard liner Majestic passes the Berengaria on her way into Southampton. She was built by Blom and Boss for Hamburg America Line as Bismarck. After her launch in 1914, work was halted. She was completed for trials in 1921 and handed over in 1922 to the White Star Line. She was the world's largest ship until 1935. The Royal Caribbean International's Majesty of the Seas at 73,900 tons is seen here docked in Nassau. Built by Harland and Wolfe for P&O, Maloya was launched in 1923 at 20,800 tons. She served as an armed merchant cruiser from 1939 to 1941 and then as a troop ship. She came back into service in 1948. She's seen here in Aden bunkering on her way to Bombay and eventually Australia. These pictures were taken well before the war. The 1906 Mauritania at 31,900 tons was an exceptionally popular ship. She was built by Swan Hunter and Wigram for Cunard and she first broke the record of the Atlantic crossing in 1907 and then from 1909 held it for 20 years. She served as a troop ship and a hospital ship during the First World War. The slightly larger Mauritania II of 35,700 tons was built in 1938 and served as a troop ship from 1940 to 1946 when she returned to Cunard service. Maxim Gorky built by Hauswerk Deutsche Werft as Hamburg for the Deutsche Atlantic Line, later named Hanseatic. 
then in 1974 sold to the Black Sea Shipping Company and renamed Maxim Gorky, this ship has seen a lot of service. We see her here in Madeira Harbour, and later we'll see her turning to head out to sea. These last pictures of Maxim Gorky were taken in a rather murky Hong Kong. You can see the backdrop of Kowloon as the ship passes up the harbour to enter her berth. She is currently undertaking a last set of cruises and her fate after that is unknown. Michelangelo was launched in 1962. She was built by Ansaldo Sestri Panenti for Italia SAN and eventually sold to the Iranian government in 1976 as an accommodation ship. She's seen here in Naples. Once again, she was a beautiful ship, spoilt, in my opinion, by two extraordinary funnels. See her hair anchored off St. Lucia. Swan Alenix Minerva I was a very, very popular ship. A lot of people will be very happy to know that she's entered service again under the Swan Alenix banner. She was built as the Alexander van Halbot and launched in 1990 and has had several names since then, including. Saga Pearl and Explorer 2. We get a closer view of her here as she's docked in Mumbai. Built as R8 for Renaissance cruises, the 30,200 ton Minerva served Swanolenic for four or five years before the company along with p &O, was sold to Carnival. She's now Princess Cruises' Royal Princess. We have Lord Stirling to thank for the fact that Swan Alenic has been restored to the cruising public. We saw this ship, the Mona Lisa, before as Kongsholm. 
after which she became Pierno's Sea Princess, later renamed Victoria, and then in 1999 the Mona Lisa, as she is now. We see her in Stockholm. You'll note the painting on her funnel. Our final shots of her see her tied up in Lerwick. The 1922 launched Mongolia had a long life. She was built by Armstrong Whitworth Newcastle for p &O. She was later chartered to New Zealand and renamed Ramutaka and then sold in 1950 to Sierra de Navigation Ingress S.A. Panama and renamed Europa. She was then renamed Nassau and in 1951 finally called Acapulco. She was scrapped in 1964. We can watch as the Monterey enters Port Louis in Mauritius. She was originally built by Bethlehem SB Corp as a cargo ship Free State Mariner and sold to Matson in 1955 and rebuilt as a passenger liner called Monterey. She sold again in 1971 to the Pacific Far East Company and has had many owners since. As the Monterey for the Matson Line, her primary task was to sail from San Francisco to Honolulu and back. Built by Union Naval de Levante Valencia for Navieri Anzar Belbeo, the Monte Toledo was a ferry. She was launched in 1973 and laid up in 2002. She was alternatively used as a car ferry in the summer between Santander and Southampton. But she was also used for cruising. She was sold to the Libyans in 1977. The 
MSC Lyrica of 59,000 tons was built by Chantier de Atlantique for MSC cruises. She's seen here tied up in Antigua. These particular pictures of MSC Lyrica were taken as she left Madeira. She'd overstayed her welcome and was made to anchor outside the harbour whilst her passengers went backwards and forwards by boats. The legend is that the more funnels a ship had, as far as the Indians and the Ceylonese were concerned, the better the ship, or that was the situation at that time. Pianos Naldera of 15,825 tons was built in 1917 and scrapped in 1938. She's seen here in Colombo Harbour before the war. The Navarino was built by Ansaldo Sestri Panenti for Swedish American Line as Gripsholm and launched in 1956. She was renamed Navarino when sold in 1974. She ran aground in 1981 and then caught fire in floating dock. She was sold to Regent Sea Cruises in 1984 and renamed Regent Sea. She sunk. 2001. Navarino is seen here sailing from the Tilbury landing stage. Launched in 1950, the Neptunia was built by C.R. Del Adriatico for Lloyd Tristino. She was sold to Italia S.A.N. in 1963 and renamed Rossini. The first pictures of Navassa were taken in the Far East from the troop ship Oxfordshire. Navassa was purposely built as a troop ship and launched in 1955 at 20,527 tons and she was under BI management. She was later rebuilt as a school ship in 1964 and transferred to the P&O. These shots were taken of her as she was overtaken by Canberra at sea in 1961. Navassa was scrapped in 1975.
last shots show her as a school ship still under BI management. Built for Holland America Line and launched in 1937, New Amsterdam served as a British troop ship from 1940 to 1946. She was returned to the Holland America Line and served with them until 1974 when she was scrapped. The grey hull was adopted in 1957. Another Holland America liner, the Nordam, was launched in 1984 primarily for cruising. She was 33,930 tons. She's seen here in the Chilean fields. We pick her up again in the Baltic and here she's birthed in St. Petersburg. Nordam became Thompson Celebration in 2005. Northern Star, built by Vickers Armstrong, was the second of Shaw, Savile and Albion's liners to be built purely as passenger ships without any cargo. This enabled them both to keep to a more strict schedule. We see her here in Fremantle, turning to leave the harbour. Nordic Prince was 23,149 tons. She was lengthened in 1980. The Norway was originally built 
as France by Chantier d'Atlantique for CGT. She was sold to South Arabian interests in 1977 and then to Kloster in 1979 and renamed Norway. She's been taken out of service now and is awaiting scrapping. The Norwegian crown was originally Crown Odyssey, built by Mayor Weft in 1998, which is 32,242 tons. She became a Norwegian crown before transfer to the Orient Line as Crown Odyssey again and then back to NCL more recently. She was bought by Fred Olsen and renamed Balmoral in 2007 and she's been stretched 